Hey guys and welcome to another GIMP Essential training video. In this video and the next few videos we're going to do a little project and so you're going to need the same files that I have or you're going to need something similar if you want to follow along exactly or if you have your own images that you want to use that's fine too and in this project these are the images I'm going to use um, and I've labeled all the images so we can identify them later on. So the first picture or image we're going to be working with is called Window 1. So if we go to File, Open, and navigate to these images that you've downloaded, we're going to use Window 1, hit Open, and so let's go ahead and get started. By the way, to zoom in like I just did, I'm holding Control and I'm scrolling my mouse wheel up. So for this video, we're just going to be talking about the Rectangle Select tool. There's a lot to cover with this, so let's talk a little bit about it and the different modes. Before we actually get into these modes, I want to talk about what is a selection. So if I click and drag a rectangle, you'll notice that I'm considering this my selection. And if you look closely, there's a definite barrier or boundary between my selection and what's not my selection. Notice these um, black and white dots that seem to be moving. People refer to these as marching ants. And so what is it? Why, why would you want to have a selection? You notice I can't actually move it once I've created it by clicking and dragging the center of this. But why, why would it matter to have a selection? Why not just um, operate all over your image however you want? Well, I'll show you why. When you have an area selected, this is a common mistake people will make is they'll have an area, let's say they have a little area over here selected and they, they forget about it, they don't realize it. Then they move to their paintbrush tool and they want to black out these windows, but wait a second, it's not working. My, my program must be broken, right? It's not working. But really, what you've done is you've left, left this selection down here. So the only area I can color is my selection. Look at that. I'm going to hold Control and press Z or in Mac Command and Z to undo that. So that's one important thing about a selection is any changes you make to your document, any smudging, um, any cloning, any drawing, any of these enhancements, filters, any of these will all only be done to the selected area. I'll give you a perfect example. Let's make a selection here. Let's go to Filters, Blur, let's do Gaussian Blur. We'll leave those on default, hit OK. And now let's zoom in and look at the difference. Look, this is my selection. This is not my selection. The Gaussian Blur only affected my selection. Everything else was left alone. Now if I were to have no selection, um, defined like this, it's actually selecting my entire image instead of just a specific area. So now if I do Gaussian Blur, it'll do it to my entire document. Now you probably can't tell until I do this. I'm going to go Control Z and undo it. Bam, everything's back. And I'm going to undo this area right here with Control Z and now it's back. Okay, so that's the benefits of having a selection. Now, the, what we're going to talk about in the next series of videos is um, how to make different selections and how to make the selection exactly um, the part of the image that you want. So let's talk about the different modes. And many of these selection tools have these modes. So let's talk about the first one called Replace Current Selection. I make a selection. I don't like it, I can either overlap it, make a new one, or create a new one in a completely different area, and my old one will disappear every time I click and drag a new one, a new selection. Okay, that's all that means. Now, add to current selection, as you may have guessed, I have a selection, I'm on add to current selection, so I can just make a new one, and now I've selected two areas. So now when I draw, 
it affects only these two areas because these are my two selections. Another thing you can do when you're on the rectangle tool, add to selection, is if you have a rectangle already made and you just want to add on to it, well check it out. Anything that didn't already exist in the current selection will be added on. So check that out. Now, I'm going to click out here. So now you can see I had my original one and then I had my additional one and all it did is redraw the lines of the selection. So now when I draw, I can draw in this shape. Okay, does that make sense? Let's do Control or Command and Z and undo that. Let's talk about this next mode. So we'll go back to the rectangle. We'll choose the Subtract from Current Selection. Of course, it doesn't work out here. There's no selection, right? It only works where I actually have a selection. When I click and drag and release, it will remove where they overlap. Now the opposite is true for this mode called intersect. When I click and drag, only where they can, uh, only where they overlap will remain. See? The rest is gone. Only the stuff that existed on the original selection and my new selection will remain. So those are the different modes you can do. I'm going to go back to the original mode and we're going to move down to feathering the edges. Okay, so I had feathering the edges on the entire time, and you probably didn't notice the difference because I had it so low. I'm going to turn it up to, hmm, let's turn it up to 15 so you can really see. Before we do it, though, um, I'm going to be deleting some areas, but I don't want them to turn white. I want them to be invisible. So we want to go to Layer, Transparency, Add to Alpha Channel. So what does that mean? It means anytime I remove something from my image, such as um, cutting something out or using the eraser tool and erasing something, what I'm doing is instead of erasing it back to the white paper that you can imagine this, this photograph was printed on, what I'm doing is I'm making kind of a hole through my image. So now I can actually see through my picture to my canvas. Because remember earlier when we talked about the canvas I told you this area back here is the canvas and this is not attached to my picture. So look, no matter where I move my image I can see right through it to my canvas because that's what Add to Alpha Channel does. So I'm going to hold control and press Z to undo all those. I'm done making my point. And we're going to learn more about transparency when we get into layers. But for now, we're talking about the rectangle tool. And I'm going to show you feathering edges. So let's just say we want to move this window pane. We select the inside of the where the glass is. And if I hit delete, I will delete the area. And now this is transparent. If delete key is not working for you, you can also go to edit clear. You notice that this is the action clear. And this is the shortcut key for me on my computer. It's default set to the, de the delete key on my keyboard. Not the backspace key, the delete key. Okay, so just so you're aware. You can also do cut, which will have the same effect, but it'll just save this to your clipboard instead of uh, making it disappear. So let's talk about the feathering. So I just made the feathering 15. So you'll notice here's my actual selection line. There's not a hard line between what existed before and what exists um, up here. You notice that, see this hard line right here? There is a hard line because this is all white and this is my, well, this is my window molding. But a lot of it was left and it's just kind of faded. Um, 15 pixels, you know, probably about seven above and seven below. So if I turn this down, I'm going to turn it down to 2, and I'm going to hold Control and press Z to undo that delete. And I'm going to click out here to get rid of that selection. And let's make a new selection. Okay, so you have to make a new selection if you change the radius. You can't use your existing selection. So let's do it again. Let's hit Delete, 
And now you'll see a much smaller change. Look, two pixels down, two pixels up. And, um, and that's probably a much better transition between nothing and your molding. So anyway, now you know what the feathering of edges does. So I'm going to control Z and undo that and click out here to remove the selection. I should point out there's another way you can remove selection. If I have an area selected and clicking out here is not removing it for some reason, because maybe you're not on the right tool or you don't want to go back to this tool just to make this disappear, well, you can simply go to select none and my selection disappears. Another thing I, you, that you can do, I wanted to point out earlier, but I forgot, when you make a selection, you can actually select everything except this. So when I make a selection, normally I select just this. But if I go to select, invert, now what I've done is I've selected everything except for this. So now look, when I'm drawing, I can color everywhere except where I select it. Because what I've done is I've chosen the inverse. And that's the benefit of choosing the inverse. If I go to select, invert again, now I've selected just the inside and not out here. So you can easily flip back and forth between what you've selected. So I'm going to hold Control or Command if I'm in Mac and press Z to get rid of that. Go to select none. And let's move on with our uh, demonstration. So let's talk about rounded corners. As you may have guessed, rounded corners mean you have rounded corners. So if you notice, that there's some rounded edge going on right there. The radius of 20 pixels. If I hit delete and select nothing out here, you can really see the dramatic difference between a square and or a rectangle and a rounded rectangle. So I'm going to hit Control Z and undo that twice to remove that. I'm going to get rid of the rounded corners and the feathered edges. And let's talk about fixed. Okay, fixed as aspect ratio. Now, if you have this unchecked, you can make your rectangle any dimensions that you want. Um, if you press fixed, it can only be a perfect square. That's all that is. You can also do it by holding the shift key. So I'm holding shift and look at that little check mark. It'll turn on when I hold shift. So it's just a little shortcut for you to do if you need a perfect square. Now you can also change this from aspect ratio to specific things. Let's say, let's say you have a, you know you need a 100 by 100 selection in multiple areas. Well, sorry, I got to select it first. Okay. No matter what I select, it's always going to be a perfect 100 by 100 pixel selection. And that's all that is. I'm going to go back to the default and turn it off. Now you can have starting positions. Um, I wouldn't mess too, too much with that unless you need finer detail. And also, of course, the size, if you need a fixed size. Um, you know, when this was changed to size 100 by 100, see, I can change it here. And it'll actually override this, this default here. So anyway, I'm just going to put that back on its default. So the last thing I want to show you is the highlights. If you're not sure exactly where your selection is, well, you can make it so it's highlighted. I did also skip something earlier, the expand from center. All this means is instead of choosing the top left or top right or any of the corners before you click and drag, if you just choose the center of where you want this rectangle shape, you simply click the center and pull out. Let's say you want a perfect square. That's fine. Hold shift. Now you have a perfect square. Let's control Z to undo that. Okay. Undo that. All right. Let's talk about guides really fast. 
Uh, let's talk about center lines. Okay. So another way to find the exact center is to have center lines. And they're just guides. They're not they're not really there for any other reason than just to let you line up your rectangle exactly where you need it to. Um, oh, you know, you can't mess around with these other ones. Um, rule of thirds splits you up into exactly three equal parts up and down. So play around with these. You guys can use these as guides, but they don't affect your overall selection, which is just this shape outside here where the marching ants are. Anyway, guys, I think I covered everything with the rectangle selection tool and the difference between the different modes and some of the options. Let me uh, know if you guys have any questions down below and stay tuned. We'll be going over the other selection tools. Thanks.